This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com slash Babish. Hello. Welcome back to Kendall Combines, where I combine two mystery ingredients that Brad and Nico this time have provided for me. Well, let's do it, yeah? I'm real nervous. I'm not sweating though, which is good. All right, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Meat. Meat that I definitely know how to cook. Whole steaks that I definitely know how to cook and have never not done before. Great. I don't even, I can't tell you what this is. <laughs> what good this is. New York strip. Thank you, it's New York strip. I can tell by looking at it. I'm so hoping that this is something that goes so well with steak. Okay. Oh, chocolate! <laughs> so much chocolate! Okay, I feel pretty good about this. Mm, I don't, I don't feel good about this. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat this and not that. So I came up with a plan. We're gonna make beef wellingtons, but they're gonna be mini because the steaks are kind of small. The elements of beef wellington are beef, duck cell, which is a finely chopped minced mushroom mixture. Crepes are typically used to kind of ensconce the whole beef mixture before it's wrapped in puff dough. And then there's also prosciutto in there too. Where? I don't remember, I'll find out. So beef in the beef wellington, beef tallow in the puff dough, chocolate in the crepes, and chocolate sauce to be served over top of the miniature beef wellingtons. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. This is gonna be a long day. <laughs> I'm using pre-rendered beef tallow because the New York strips that we already have, I would have to get a lot more to have enough tallow. I don't think I can use 100% beef tallow because it doesn't soften the same way that butter does. So I'm gonna go with a 50-50% ratio. I've got eight ounces of butter here and I'm gonna measure out eight ounces of beef tallow, but in combining them, I can't just melt the tallow and melt the butter because when butter melts and then solidifies, the emulsion is broken. And again, it won't behave the same way. I'm going to soften both the butter and the tallow to around 80 degrees. So it's like room temperature softened, mix them together and then refrigerate that without hopefully breaking the butter. So it's combined. Now I'm gonna make a thin patty out of this maybe. I think that'll chill faster. I've separated them so that they can harden once more into a butter stick-like consistency. And then I'm gonna make a butter block out of them. So now we're gonna be making the base dough for the puff. And that's gonna be 20 ounces of all-purpose flour, four ounces of softened butter, half an ounce of salt, and about 10 ounces of water, give or take. Once they are combined, I mix them in the stand mixer until a shaggy dough forms. Then I'll turn it out onto the work surface and knead it a little bit if necessary and then roll it out to a rectangle about eight by 12 inches and more importantly, half an inch in thickness. And then we'll refrigerate that and make the butter block. Speaking of, it's time. The butter tallow mixture has hardened in the fridge. It's perfect right now. So I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna make a butter block. So we got both our blocks here. So this broke, which is not boding well for this situation, but I think it'll be fine still. So. Use a French rolling pin, it's better for beating. I'm trying to soften the mixture by beating it to make it more pliable. Once it's ensconced in dough and I roll it out, it'll move with the dough instead of breaking apart into pieces if it's too hard or if it's too soft, it might squish out. But this isn't squishing right now. So, ooh, this is really annoying. Um, this is really quite annoying. <laughs> Brad gives his hardest combinations to his strongest candles. That's what they always say. That is the old adage. It's all gonna be okay. No one's gonna get mad at me. Are you mad at Kendall? If anything, I'm a little bit nervous because I really want this to work out well so that I will want to eat more of it. So in a way, you're saying you won't be mad, you'll just be disappointed? Is that is that what he's saying? So you won't be mad and disappointed. <laughs> Not to put the pressure on you. We're back. I've calmed down. This is fine. 
I'm just gonna ensconce this joke. It's called a book fold. If I had it to my left, that'd be more. See, look, oh, look, I'm reading a book, you know. Is ensconce the word of the day? Can um, it, I can't think of a note in case. I just did one fold, the first fold, the book fold. Now I'm gonna do the first four fold and the three fold at the same time because this dough is super rusted and I think it'll be fine. And that's gonna go back into the fridge to allow the butter tallow mixture to reharden and allow the gluten to relax. Then I'm gonna perform another four fold, refrigerate it again, and then another three fold, and then the dough will be ready. It just has to sit overnight and then we can roll it out for use tomorrow. Hello, welcome back. It's been a second for you, but it's been a whole night for us. It's the next day and we've got more beef. I'm gonna try to butcher it, but I'm probably going to butcher it. The New York Strip is not a super fatty cut. Uh, obviously there's the fat cap, which I will cut off. Um, and then we'll use just the meaty meats for our Wellingtons. And it should behave similarly. I'm just gonna generously season both, well, all sides with salt and freshly ground black pepper. All right, okay, I did an okay job. You're not gonna wanna cover these while they're in the fridge because basically you want as much airflow as possible so that when you sear it, there's not a lot of moisture there. So get a good sear because if water leaches out, it's gonna prevent a crust from forming. Atrocious, atrocious. So now we're going to make the chocolate crepes. Going into the blender, we've got two large eggs, 11 ounces of whole milk, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, four and a half ounces of all-purpose flour, one ounce of cocoa powder, and two tablespoons of unsalted butter melted. Then we're just gonna go ahead and blend this all together until it's completely smooth. So we got our batter here, and now I'm just gonna set up for actually cooking these bad boys. To cook the crepes, I'm just melting about probably a tablespoon of butter. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of batter over the pan and then quickly swirl it around so that the entire bottom of the pan is covered in batter. And cook the crepe for about one minute on the first side and then very carefully flip it and cook for another 30 seconds to 45 seconds. Um, and then do it all over again until we don't have any more batter. Oh no, wrong, wrong, wrong. Why did I do it with my fingers? Do you think cooking this longer would fix it? <laughs> That is the face of failure. Oh! Oh, oh! It just tastes like a normal crepe, and then it finishes with like a little, a little bitter, which I think actually might work kind of nicely, because we got a lot of rich flavors going on. Let's do it again. No, more. Okay, less, less, less is what I wanted, not more. I am bad at this. I'm never doing that again. We're all set up to do duck cell. We've got our cremini mushrooms, which I stupidly hand chopped instead of using a food processor. Definitely use a food processor if you have one. Shallot, garlic, thyme, cognac, just a nice alcohol to give it some nice flavor. To make the duck cell, I'm gonna melt two tablespoons of butter in a skillet, and then I'm gonna add the mushrooms and cook them until all the moisture has been released. Uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and add the shallot, garlic and thyme. Cook that for a minute or two until the shallots and garlic are cooked through. Then I'm gonna add in the cognac to finish it off. Cook that until it's mostly evaporated and obviously the alcohol flavor has cooked off. And then I'm gonna let it chill until we're ready to use it. I'm a little tired. <laughs> so we've got the beef here. Uh, it's been sitting in the fridge for roughly two hours. They're really small, so I'm gonna go really high on the heat. Uh, so it's really quick. So we got our beef seared. I'm gonna let these cool and then I'm gonna refrigerate them. Then I'm gonna brush them down with Dijon mustard and then we'll be ready to rumble. We have our steaks here. These beautiful beef babies are not shaped the same way that a tenderloin is. Tenderloin comes, it's pretty much like a long tube. These guys are less easy to, <laughs> to roll up. I'm gonna add the beef here and roll it and cut the crepe to size so there's not so much extra crepe on the sides. Then I'm gonna do a layer of prosciutto and duck cell, and then I'm gonna wrap and then fridge it for like 30 minutes and then we'll get into the uh, puff dough. We've got our puff dough here. It's real hard, so, but I feel like 
gonna soften up real fast. So we're gonna make quick work of this and roll it out to about an eighth of an inch thickness. So now we're gonna encuff in ensconce the beef turds. I feel like there's a more appetizing way to say that. Well, how else will you upset your mom at Christmas time? So I don't, I wanna make sure that there's not too much dough. So if there's a lot of do extra dough hanging out, like if there's a lot of overhang on the seam or on the sides, all it's gonna do is press together and then you'll have these two little knobs of uncooked dough at the end, which we don't want. All right, she's a little oblong, she's a real potato, but aren't we all pretty okay with that? Now I'm gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and refrigerate the entire Wellington for 30 minutes. We got one last turd here. I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna do kind of like a meat pie batibier style wherein I cut two rectangles and then and then you'll see. Now we're gonna make the sauce. It's gonna be a cognac thyme cream sauce, <laughs> as the name might suggest. And then once the sauce is done, cooked to the consistency I want it to be, then I'll take it off the heat and stir in the chocolate, its namesake, chocolate cognac sauce. We've got our little babies here. I'm gonna unwrap them. We're going to brush them with egg wash, score them, bake them, and then we're done here. And now that the beef wellingtons have been in the oven for 25, 30 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. The internal temperature is about 120 degrees, so hopefully with carryover cooking, it'll be a perfect medium layer, we hope. So I'm gonna let these cool for five minutes, and then we'll slice and serve and get Andrew's opinion. Kendall. Today, we ordained that you combine steak and chocolate. I did do. And you've done do this. I done do did. Today. Mm -hmm. Now, here, America. Do you so, want me to tell you about it? I'd love to hear all about this. Okay. I mean, clearly, I have a beef wellington. What'd you do? I made the puff dough with 50% beef tallow, 50% butter, which I don't recommend doing. It was very, very difficult to do. The crepes layer is chocolate crepe. Chocolate crepe? With crepe. no sugar. So it's just like this very, I mean, you'll see. It Sandry may not be good at all. It, it tastes but. like a, like a normal white flour crepe to begin with. And then it finishes with like this bitter earthy cocoa powder flavor because there's no sugar. The other element of chocolate here is the sauce. Yes. So I didn't really know, chocolate sauce is kind of a thing for steak, but usually it's like a red wine reduction thing, which I know you're not a fan of, and I'm not really such a fan of either. So steak with chocolate sauce sounds like a salt bay thing. Yeah. yeah, so this is a cognac cream sauce, oh. which was, it took two seconds to make, and it was so good. I'm gonna yeah, eat it, it, eat, eat it, eat it. Taste everything. Um, I Every time I made an element, I was like, oh, that's a little salty. So just expect that. We, we were just talking about how hard it is to work coffee mm -hmm. in recipes. Chocolate, I would feel the same way about, but using chocolate in a savory capacity with no sugar, just the cocoa powder, there's something to that because there is a richness to this that if you fed it to me, mm -hmm. I know it's different, but I would not be able to identify it. It's got a mystery savoriness to mm -hmm. it that is actually very enjoyable. What's interesting? Oh, I, I, I like to, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm overall happy and I'm, and I love miniature cute things. So I have a great day. This is so delicious. I think that you hit it out of the park. Mm. This is fantastic. Thank you. And it's not like you're trying to sneak cocoa in here. It's an element of it. Mm. It's something new, something different. And doggone it, I like it. <laughs> Thank you for combining for me today. Oh, I don't have a response to that. Okay. Thank, thanks for coming. Oh, bye. Bye, bye. Ooh, careful. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.